Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For this tutorial, I have been inspired by candles lately. Of all things, candles. And I love the uh, gradation of color that you get in candles sometimes on the side. So I've been trying to figure out how to make a cake with that in mind. And this flower on here is made with flexible flower paste. Look at that. Isn't that cool? This was um, about six hours after I made it. And it was still that flexible. And even the next day, they were somewhat flexible. So I love this because, and this is how stretchy it is. It's a very simple recipe, and I will link it below. Um, and then I add some white food coloring because just the nature of it, it's made with cornstarch, and that is an off-white color. So I will add in the description how I made this. Very simple. Um, I found the recipe online, and I will try to find where I got that to tag that person also because I can't claim it since it's not mine, but it worked really, really well. And I'm just using my peony petal cutters for this. And then getting a vein in there using this vein impressive impression silicone mold saves you a lot of trouble. And what I really love about this flexible paste, just in general, I might be converted from regular gum paste to this flexible because what I loved about it was that you can cut out all your petals at the same time. You don't have to worry about um, covering them up uh, because they, they stay flexible. Obviously, they're yeah, called flexible um, and moldable for a long time. So you can cut out. I like to assembly line things. You can cut out all your petals. You can um, vein all your petals in one go. You can then ruffle your edges in one go and then assemble. And um, yeah, it's wonderful. And it, you just use water to attach it. You don't even need, you could probably do a gum glue, you know, make a glue out of it with uh, water, add a little bit of it. Uh, if you would like a thicker adhesive, but water worked just fine. And I'm just assembling it like I typically do with roses. And I've done quite a few uh, tutorials on that recently, so I don't think you need me to explain it again, but you can see how I did it. And then I made all these extra petals. I used three sides, sizes of petals, I should tell you. Um... The smaller ones were towards the center of the of the rows, and then I used I did a, two rows of that, and then I did a row or two I can't remember I think it was seven petals of the next size up on the row center, and then I used the next size up for the larger petals, and I just set those aside for a little while while I did my wrap. I if you guys have seen my videos before, um, you know I like to use this at the acetate sheets for these types of tex techniques because I feel like you can. Make your design not directly on the cake and then transfer it to the cake. So there's some room for mistakes there. If you don't like it, you wipe it off, you start over again. But what I did, I just used black buttercream. I just used black um, color gel uh, in my regular American buttercream. If you don't want to do that, you can always, if you don't want that much black food coloring, you can always make a chocolate buttercream as long as it goes with your flour, your flavor of your cake and then add less black food coloring to it. And I'm just using a pastry brush to stipple on that effect. And then a sponge for larger pieces. I like the different sizes of, what should we call this? I don't know what to call it, that design element. Then I stuck it in the freezer for about 20 minutes. That way that black's not gonna smudge around when you are um, when you're blending it together on the back like I do when I do this type of technique, um, you're, it's, it's just going to stay in place. And then I piped on the black on the bottom. I tried to make it an irregular edge because I didn't want it to be you know, black, then white. And you'll see how I add the white into the black after I put it on the cake. And I'm just smoothing it down a little bit. Trying to eliminate some, since I piped it, some lines that you get sometimes when you have your piped lines, you can't really smooth it from the other side, the side that's going to be seen. So I like to kind of push it down on the acetate a little bit. Then I did the same thing with the white buttercream. I suppose you don't have to pipe it on. That's just what I chose to do this time. You could just spatula, use a spatula if you want. I didn't mind a few little potholes and um, texture on the other side of it when I add it onto the cake because I just figure it kind of goes with the whole look. 
And then I'm just smoothing it all down so that when you stick it onto your cake, you have a level surface or more level. Now this cake has been crumb coated and chilled and I'm just adding a thin layer of buttercream to attach the wrap to. This doesn't have to be perfect because obviously you're going to have the wrap on top of it. Just get it as smooth as you can without stressing yourself out about getting it perfect. And even that edge at the top, we're going to cut that off later. So don't worry about that. Then I just picked up the piece and that white on there. I didn't even see that before. when I was doing it. That was just buttercream that was on the table. And then I'm just using my fondant smoother to try to make it a the same thickness all the way around. Just smooth it down. Get rid of any air bubbles or any little indentations. You, you do have a little bit of uh, wiggle room when you're smoothing it. Then pop it into the freezer for about, I did about an hour. And then just bring it out and remove that acetate. Look at that, isn't that cool? But I'm not done with it yet. Then I'm just using a straight blade and removing that lip off the top and level, you know, just leveling it out. And I scraped the seam in the back down smooth and I'm just pulling that top part in. Then we have our crisp corner on the top. Now this is how I did, you probably figured it out by now, the same technique that I used with that black, I'm using with the white on top of the black. Just so you have more of a blended um, color gradation there. I don't mind some of the line, but I wanted to make it look like the two colors were kind of laid on top of each other, which they were, but you know what I mean, right? Like it was more of a natural occurrence. And I'm just going between the uh, pastry brush and the sponge. And with the white, you're going to have to wipe it off quite a bit because the color from the black will end up kind of getting stuck on your um, brush also. See how flexible these are? These had set out for a couple, uh, I would say probably honestly five hours because I was doing two cakes at the same time this day. So they set out for a while, but they were still very flexible. And I just put the flower on the edge and I'm doing, just attaching these petals with buttercream. And just laying them on there randomly. I mean, you can overlap them if you want to, but I was just kind of going with how it looked as I went. I didn't need it to be a perfect flower because it's going to have that abstract um, draping down the side. Most flowers do not look like that. <laughs> And if you need to, if you need to like on the, on the corner there, on a couple of those petals, I cut a little V shape in the bottom so that they would sit on that edge and not look awkward. And I did end up cutting off the bottom tip of these petals because they were just too long, which don't be afraid to do that. You can do that too. I didn't want to go too far down on the side, but just enough to kind of mimic that diagonal line of the colors of the buttercream. You'll know when you have enough petals. You'll just, I mean, you might second guess yourself, but you'll get a feeling, okay, time to stop. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. This was fun to do. Uh, a little bit more simple, but actually has really big effects. So I hope you got something from it. I hope you can use something. And I really hope you enjoy the new recipe for the flour paste. And we'll catch you on the next one. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.